Now, understanding the concept of deposit insurance and moral hazard. So, deposit insurance is a concept which talks about the kind of insurance which is provided against customer deposits. So, customer deposits up to a certain level are guaranteed by a, a certain agency. So, in the United States, we have FDIC, which provides a guarantee up to a certain level of investment deposits. Similarly, in India, we have DICGC, which is an agency similar to FDIC in the United States, which provides a protection up to a certain extent to investor deposits. So, let's say that uh, FDIC is uh, providing insurance against X dollars for uh, invest for customers money, which is parked as a part of uh, part of their savings with the bank. Then. Uh, any any credit losses or if in case there is a run on the bank if, or if the bank runs into problems and is unable to repay this X dollars which which the customer has parked with the bank, then any uh, anything up to this X dollars will be met by FDIC. So imagine X dollars is something which FDIC guarantees and the customer has parked Y dollars. So we know that Y dollars is greater than this. Now I'm keeping it generic so that uh, it becomes easy to understand and then we can apply it for different numbers as well. So in case that value of X dollars changes, this uh, explanation still remains relevant. So imagine that a customer has parked Y dollars with the bank. So this is the total funds which have been parked or the total funds which have been put in the savings account. Now imagine that the bank has run into problems and it's unable to repay the customer. That is, there is a run on the bank or there is some other problem and bank simply cannot repay the customer. Or if the bank files for bankruptcy, then uh, FDIC can step in and FDIC will repay X dollars of, of the total quantum. So this is the amount which has been guaranteed by FDIC. So something similar what DICGC does in India as well. So the idea behind deposit insurance is to uh, bolster the uh, bolster customer confidence because unless customers are confident that their money is safe, they will not park their money in the banks. And unless the uh, funds are channeled into the banking industry, they, they won't be accessible for other economic activities. So that's why uh, enhancing and improving customers' confidence is paramount. And for this, the concept of deposit insurance exists in short. Now, a related concept to deposit insurance is moral hazard. Now, this is also something which is a type of risk which is commonly studied as a part of the insurance business. So, we'll have a separate review on uh, insurance companies as well. We'll talk a bit about moral hazard there as well because it's a similar concept used there. So, the concept of moral hazard implies that the insured parties tend to take higher risk than they would actually do in a business as usual scenario. So, take a very simple example to understand this first point. So let's say I have a, I have a, I have a auto, uh, let's say I have a bike and uh, I have purchased, uh, purchased insurance for the bike. That is, I have a theft insurance, which I have purchased against uh, the bike, bike getting stolen. So now that at the back of the mind, I know that I have purchased a theft insurance for the bike. I may behave irresponsibly at times. That is, let's say I, I take my bike to a certain place, I, I, in a hurry, I simply leave it unlocked and it gets, gets stolen. Now, that's an irresponsible behavior on my part, but that has to stem from the concept of the moral hazard because now I know that I have purchased theft insurance. So, e even if the bike uh, gets stolen, I'll still be compensated. Uh, I'll get the required money from the insurance company and I can simply go and purchase a new bike. So, that may make me irresponsible. So, that is something which happens uh, particularly whenever we talk of such insurance. Now, insured parties may tend to behave irresponsibly or take on higher risk than they would actually do uh, in case there is no insurance. So, that is one of the uh, risks which we call as the moral hazard risk. Also, from the banking perspective, depositors may pay, pay less heed to the bank's financial condition. Again, it's very important that uh, any depositor who is parking money in the bank should keep a track of how exactly the bank is faring as well because uh, the financial condition of the bank is equally important because our hard-earned money, so imagine that I am a depositor, then my hard-earned money has been parked in saving, saving accounts or time deposits with the bank 
and if the bank's condition is deteriorating, deteriorating naturally, my funds are going to be at risk. So my hard-earned savings will be at risk. But because I have someone like a FDIC who is there for my rescue, I know that uh, that much quantum of uh, deposits are are guaranteed or insured by by FDIC. So I may I may not pay the required amount of uh, attention to the bank's financial condition. So so that can be another way of looking at moral hazard. Third can be uh, banks may tend to offer higher rate of interest on deposits and also make riskier loans because the, the bank knows that even if the bank itself fails, then you have someone like FDIC who would step in and customers who come asking for their funds, FDIC will be there to uh, pay those funds because FDIC has provided insurance on them. So this may uh, lead to bank acting irresponsibly or maybe taking higher risk than they would normally do as a business as usual scenario. So compared to the BAU scenario, this kind of risk could be higher. That is, they are uh, advancing more amount of higher loans. So these are a few examples in which moral hazard risk can manifest itself. And whenever we study uh, insurance, moral hazard is something which is always studied along with it. Now, there are a few ways to address or a few ways to mitigate the moral hazard risk. One is there is a concept of insurance premium, which will be based or which will be a risk based premium. That is uh, every bank who wishes to have the services of FDIC for the insurance perspective, they have to allocate a certain amount of premium payment or certain premium payment is expected from them. So those banks which are poorly capital, capitalized will be expected to pay a higher deposit insurance premium. Whereas those banks which are more stable or which have a, a robust capital framework will be expected to pay a lower premium. So for example, a well capitalized bank might have to pay a premium of 0.1% of the insured amount. Whereas a certain bank which is poor on the capital scale or which doesn't have ample amount of capital will have to pay a, a premium. So they may end up paying uh, maybe something like 0.35% of the insured amount as a deposit insurance premium. So that way, uh, banks will be charged different amount of premiums, which will make them more risk aware. And they'll know that in case they start behaving in a more risky manner, and if they're if they're not considered very stable from a capital perspective, they will have to shell out more amount of funds uh, as a part of this deposit insurance payment. So this could be one of the ways to deter banks from taking on unnecessary risk. And this could be one of the ways to address the moral hazard risk.